Hello, everyone. It is Halloween 2022, and this is Police Science Snippets number 100. A massive milestone, if you ask me, when I started this 100 weeks ago, these weekly Police Science Snippets. I didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know if you guys would care. I didn't know if I was going to carry on, if I was going to find enough snippets to share with you. But um, I have been trawling through them week by week, all these newly published art articles in academic journals to try and extract three bits that I think might have in be of interest to you, frontline practitioners. And you have been telling me over and over again that you do actually find them useful. You are interested in them, so I'll keep on doing them. So this has been 100 weeks already. I am recording this on the 31st of October. And I'm streaming this on the 1st of November. Sorry, it can't be live, but I teach at university on Tuesdays at the moment. So I can't be doing this live, which is why I have to pre-record the day before. And I am dressed in a Halloween outfit, um, one of only three. I find that as, a, as an adult, you don't actually have that many costumes. And as a woman, you really don't have much choice unless you're going for a slutty version of a normal costume, um, which I don't tend to do. So happy Halloween, happy 100th. Um, science, police science snippets, and do let me know what you think of them. If you do enjoy them, it's good to hear. If you come across research that you think might be useful and applicable, please do send it in to contact at policesciencedr.com. I appreciate it, and I would give you credit for them as well. So every Tuesday, I go live and stream and uh, talk about these snippets and discuss what they mean and how they might be um, applicable to your to your job, hopefully. Bearing in mind, you kind you lot have very different kinds of jobs all over the world, so obviously it can't be always be 100% specific to you, but I do hope you find them useful. The other thing that I wanted to share with you um, today is that actually in two days from now, on the 3rd of, hang on, when is it? Well, on this Thursday, let me just show this. Um, the launch is happening here, so it's November the 3rd. The launch of the of the new organization for European crime analysts analysts. Now it's actually free to be a part of that, which I think is fantastic. And I would I wouldn't be surprised if it's totally okay for you to join, even if you don't actually have um, if you're actually not based in the EU. So if you are an analyst, obviously, in one of the European countries, or so if you want to contact and be in touch with analysts in the European countries, I'm sure you're very welcome to join the organization for free and be kept up to date and network and socialize and exchange information and tips, but also do come to the launch event. So just go to um, crime-analysts.eu. So that's crime-analysts.eu. And we've got the launch event, a free online launch event coming up this Thursday. Friedrich Steiner is organizing the whole thing. So um, I've been very pleased to support that because I think it's great um, what he's doing. And I think it's great that it's accessible for free to everyone. Okay, so let's get to the spooky Halloween version of the police science snippets, number 100. The first one is about profiling of fraudsters. The snippet is as follows. In general, international research supports the historical picture of the traditional fraudster as an older, white, employed, well-educated male of a middle-high socio-demographic status who appears to be a late-onset offender. Okay, so very different profile to other types of crime. So the fraudster, white-collar crime, uh, tends to be well-educated, well-to-do, white male and a little bit older i think what they mean by older is not retirement age but you know perhaps 40s 50s something like that somebody's already achieved quite a lot professionally so profiling as you know is simply prioritizing which suspects you go for first or where you start focusing your search okay the second snippet for today is about crime hotspots i have shared a lot of information about hotspots patrolling for example hotspots analysis on here um, and this is about how you measure them. So crime is highly concentrated in a small number of places, and these concentrations persist across time. We, we know that. However, that may only apply for a number of months. 
Whilst most related research has looked at years as the time measurement period, we should actually examine the stability or instability of violent crime hotspots in the unit of months, not years, as we will otherwise ignore variations. So when we're actually looking at, okay, this particular hotspot is a hotspot this year and the next year and the next year, um, or, it, you know, it, it is more of a hotspot than other hotspots, we might, we might actually be disregarding a lot of information that is related, but... Um, is more seasonal so a hotspot might be very much a hotspot for a number for a small number of months and then might cool down quite a bit and then um, heat up again so to speak and we we will be ignoring all those fluctuations which are really quite significant if we're only looking at them year by year so we need to actually um, use the unit of months for analysis so this is for crime analysts um, we need to analyze them in terms of months to, to look at their stability or instability to look at the patterns rather than years and the third snippet for today is about the factors influencing the use of force by police when they encounter citizens. Officer verbal antagonism may immediately invoke them to use force or may elicit suspect actions that directly require force responses. Civilian resistance also significantly influences when force occurs. For example, civilian physical antagonism and civilian flee attempts. So basically, in any interaction between the police and members of the public, both parties ideally should remain factual and polite. And there should be no resistance by the suspects, ideally, because you're just going to antagonize the situation. I haven't been in a situation where police were questioning me, searching me, perhaps trying to arrest me. But I'm hoping that if that ever happens, I would stay factual and calm and try to deal with the situation as best I can. If I was a civilian and if I was a police officer, the same. Okay, so it's very important. Everybody keeps a cool, calm, collected head and deals with the situation to try and de-escalate it and keep it calm. And um, obviously we don't want anyone to spiral out of control. So both sides have responsibility for how they behave during these encounters. So these were the snippets for today. Again, this week, Thursday, the free virtual opening of the European Crime Analysis um, Association or European Association of Crime Analysts. And again, the URL for that is crime-analysts, plural, dot EU, because it's a European organization. So I hope to see you at the launch event and I hope to see you um, next time when I do another broadcast and I hope that you found this useful. I wish you a wonderful Halloween. Thank you for being with me for this journey. So far, 100 police science snippets. No idea how much longer this will um, carry on, but if you find it useful, let me know because it encourages me to keep it going. Okay, until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this content useful. You can get access to each episode's transcript with key learning points, timestamps and references if you get yourself onto my mailing list. Just go to the main website on policesciencedoctor.com and on the bottom of each page you will find a sign-up form for notifications of new content. Just enter your first name, your preferred email address and the type of organization you work for. You will not get any spam, this is just for me to let you know about new content and for you to get access to all the transcripts.